From Fox 8 Sports, this is the Overtime Podcast. From the Fox 8 Studios in New Orleans, this is the Fox 8 Overtime Podcast. I'm Vasilios. That is Sean Fazan. Remember to like, subscribe, rate, and review. You guys can find us wherever you listen to and watch your podcast. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit the little bell notification button. You get updated every time we upload a new podcast. Sean, happy Wednesday to you. Happy Wednesday. And, uh, you know, it is another wonderful week of Saints offseason. We're going to have plenty to talk about. Mm. Today, we're going to... We're going to take a look back at the rookie class from this past year, and we're going to assign grades to them uh, based on how they performed this year, what they contributed to the team, and uh, yeah, I think we're going to start with that. Yeah, it should be a good podcast. I wanted to do this today because it just I was struck watching the games this weekend of just how much, with a few of the teams, just how much their draft classes have really stood out. And look, look, look this is what happens. This is what happens when the postseason is there. I've I've said this before. It tells the truth on what's working. And look, when you see a team that has a dominant draft classes, not just one class, plural, uh, and you you see what's what's there in front of you, I, I think it's fair to explore that and see where the Saints currently sit in that predicament because they're they're not where they want to be and those teams are where they want to be at least in terms of getting into the postseason so yeah like share rate review subscribe to this channel please the videos will keep on coming out and uh, we will keep doing that all off season it's a rainy day here in the city of New Orleans that's okay we're indoors we're going to be just (laughs) Fine. So, Sil, let's start with the big picture, where we're going. All right. So, we are grading Mm -hmm. the Saints draft. Let's start with their first-round pick, Brian Brzee. All right. All right. So, overall, this was a disappointing class in terms of instant impact. Instant impact is exactly that. Year one, instant impact. You don't want a one-hit wonder. You don't want to peak too soon. But... That doesn't mean this class is going to be a bust or will be a bust. It just means right away, collectively, the seven-player class didn't have enough of an impact or as much of an impact as certainly I would have hoped watching this team. And I think if they're being realistic inside the organization, they would have hoped with the seven-player hall that they had. A couple of players you knew were going to take some time, but a couple of players you would expect a little bit more of an instant impact. Let's start with Brian Brzee. In my opinion, he was the first-round pick. Um, I think he was the best one of all of them. In terms of availability, he was available for 17 games. Uh, I think he will be a starter. I don't know if you would technically call him a starter right now, but he is in every game regular member of the rotation along the interior of the uh, defensive line. I like him a lot as a pass rusher, and I think he got much better as the season went on. For sure, He has a lot of work to do when it comes to stopping the run, and that is going to be his Achilles heel until he figures that out, in particular against gap scheme running plays. He does, a little, he does do quite as bad against zone blocking, but against gap scheme, I think he gets pushed off his landmarks way too easily. But I think he's got a skill set that you can certainly see, okay, that guy has a skill set to be a disruptive pass rushing force along the interior of the defensive line. They're not hard. They're not easy to find. Uh, he can be that guy. Had four and a half sacks. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a a, a decent, uh, solid start for Brian Brzee. And I love the fact that he was available for all of the games. And I love the the attitude he seems to have. The the way he carries himself. I just he seemed like he was eager to learn, and he just got steadily better so I am okay with where they picked him in the first round I am okay with the contributions of Brian Brzee in year one all right so how about a letter grade for him uh how about a solid B I'm gonna gonna give that a solid B um I just think um he didn't he wasn't no one would confuse him with a rookie of the year or anything and (laughs) and no one would couldn't confuse him with a a game changer right away but I think he's kind of planted the seed a little bit of a, a guy that can be a starter and that's what you want. You want a solid starter at at minimum with your first round pick. And I think he's got some potential to be an interior pass rusher in this league. And I don't know if he's ever going to be great against the run. That's his biggest vulnerability. That's where he's got to improve. But mm. I do think for year one, at a very difficult position, at a very difficult position in year one, because the line of scrimmage is just it, everybody adapts differently as a rookie, as we'll see throughout this list. But I, I I'm okay with where he's at after one after one season with Brian Brzee. Let's not forget that lethal one on one spin move. He's but. got that spin move, man. It's <laughs> so nice. So good. All right, 
Let's talk about a guy uh, that they brought into pass rush that maybe didn't have the impact that we hoped he would in Isaiah Fossey out of Notre Dame. Yeah, and look, this is going to sound like a knock against him, and it is, but it's not meant to be to say that this guy has no future. But to me, this was the biggest disappointment because when you draft a guy a second-round pick with that kind of production out of Notre Dame, you just would have expected him to be a little further along in mm-hmm. his development than where he was. And this team considering what they needed by, say, week six or week seven through the end of the season. They needed edge pass rushing, and they had a rookie second-round pick that simply was not ready to go, and he could not be counted on. Um, And he just he had little to no impact. I know he had that half sack, and it felt like he got a few more snaps towards the end of the season. So, I mean, this is, 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 I mean, rookie year, I I don't want to say F because it's just like, that just sounds so nasty, but what else can you really say? He just didn't have any impact as a rookie. And honestly, given where he was picked, I just I, I think this was easily the most disappointing selection, at least in terms of rookie impact in Isaiah Falski. So I guess is D fair? I, I don't know. I mean, uh, I was going to give a, the, the collective grade at the end of it. I mean, individually, I mean, because there are a couple guys that didn't even see the field, so that's a, that's a right. They have no choice but to give them an F as well. But right. uh, just take that with a grain of salt. I just, well, I mean, what do you think? Because I, I thought Falski. You know, you look at his credentials, you look where he came out of, you look at the production, mm-hmm. I I just, I, I thought he would have got acclimated a lot quicker. If nothing else, if nothing else, a guy that could be a situational edge pass rusher, and he wasn't able to do that. And the, I remember going over the draft class initially when it happened, and we were both really high on. I on thought it was a great Brzee pick, and Foskey. I thought and, it was a great pick, and we thought that he was going to be able to have, a, if not a day one impact, at least something during the season where he would have a, a few pressures and maybe just make a couple of impact plays. But it just never, it never really panned out. And I think what it what it came down to was that I think in college he relied a lot on his athleticism. That's it. And and his form was never really that good, and so his athleticism kind of carried him to where he was at Notre Dame. And it, it showed when when the Saints put him on the field that that the technique wasn't all there. Yeah, and you're going up against grown minute left tackle in this league. I mean, the the, the highest paid offensive lineman play left tackle, and that's what you yep. that's what he's going up against. <laughs> and it just uh, it never came out. I know he can play uh, on the opposite side as well, but sure. I just I felt like uh, I, I wanted more at least in his rookie year. I didn't need him, I didn't need him to be a superstar, but I wanted no. more than he contributed. No doubt about it. For sure. All right, next guy is a guy who contributed a little bit. In uh, TCU's Kendra Miller, who got a little bit of action out of the backfield. Yeah, injuries cost him a lot this year, so that makes this a disappointing first year. I, I, he's one of those guys. It probably doesn't jump off the page, but when you really think about it, if he would have been available for 17 games and steadily got better, I think he could have made a difference in wins and losses, his production and out of the backfield. Because, I mean, I, we've been screaming for production out of the backfield outside of Alvin Kamara. It, mm. it just never came. Eventually, I think Miller can be an every down back in this league, but got to take care of his body, got to get a little better within the system because what running running backs are asked to do, although we've got a new system coming up, so who knows. Um, but at the very least, I think he can be a productive two. Finished out the season with a nice game. Caught more passes than many thought he would. So I give this what a C a C minus I don't know um, I'm not gonna it, he, he he was injured but I, I think I think he can develop into something because I think there's there's something there that I think he can eventually be a, a either a, an every down back or a very solid rotational back. In we saw we saw some some flashes in the preseason of what he could possibly do when mm-hmm. when things are all working out his way, but let's look at a guy that was brought in to help protect Derek Carr and Nick Saldaveri at Old Dominion now. This is another guy that didn't see the field at yeah, all. Yeah, uh, look, he was a guy who got hurt early in uh, mini camp, maybe. Strained his calf, mm-hmm. so he was behind the eight ball there. He just wasn't ready. Whether it was injuries or inexperience, he came from Old Dominion, a smaller school. Played a lot of positions up there. They, I think they want him along the interior here. No contributions whatsoever. Played 37 total snaps. I got to go back and look how many games he was actually active for. He mm-hmm. was a healthy scratch in the majority of his snaps in the rookie season. So this, there, absolutely no impact out of Nick Saldaveri. Yeah, uh, he, he, and there was also that talk about him moving positions, playing guard or tackle, and they yeah. never really settled on one. So uh, moving on, we got – possibly the future back up to Derek Carr yeah. and Jake Hayner out of Fresno State. Yeah, himself. I mean, again, so because, you know, Saldaveri Hayner 
and Hayner both had no contributions whatsoever. I mean, of course, that you have no choice but, like, but to grade it to zero, which would obviously would be sure. an F. Which, um, but in Hayner's case, I didn't expect him to. If he would have pushed, and I thought at some point in training camp he was pushing Jameis to be the number two guy, but it, realistically it was always going to be in Jameis's favor. Um, and then Jameis had that great preseason game to, to finish out the preseason, and Hayner kind of struggled. But because he was the third stringer, wasn't active, was suspended to start the season, I mean, nothing about his rookie season surprised me. So I'm not necessarily going to hold that against the Saints because I, I think – he can be a backup in this league. Sure. And I, I want to see what he does next training camp uh, in a new system and in a, a situation where who knows who, who will be in the quarterback room with him uh, because we don't, you know, there's a strong chance Jameis won't be there. So sure. who knows? All right, and next is the guy who I thought had, compared to where he was selected, yeah. had the most production in Jordan Howden playing safety. Where, what do you think about Jordan Howden, and how much do you think he contributed? Yeah, I, I, and I think where he was picked matters. Yeah. Because I, I think he's a fifth-round pick. You don't necessarily think of a fifth-round pick being a starter. You think of him as a solid-depth guy in the secondary. But I think now you might be able to talk yourself into a starting role for him next season, or at least battling for that starting mm-hmm. role next season. Made some nice plays. Had, didn't seem to be out of position, sort of knew what he was doing. Uh, nice value for a fifth-round pick to get that Certainly. immediate impact. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay with the Jordan Howden selection. I really am. So uh, I thought it was a solid rookie com- campaign when you consider, obviously, that it was a fifth-round pick. You don't, really, you don't really know what to expect out of those day three guys. Yeah, and I think I think – this this kind of fits the Saints' mo when it comes mm-hmm. to safeties or DBs. They just love the versatility in those mm-hmm. certain guys, and so he, he, being able to slide everywhere in the defensive backfield just served him well and just made him kind of almost. I want to say you 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 couldn't get rid of him. He yeah, was, I, he was just the guy. He that, earned he earned yeah, those snaps, absolutely. and he, he was a very football Invaluable. IQ was high. Um, and, you know, sometimes rookies, their heads are swimming, and he was able to get on the field and earn his spot. And at no point did you feel like, oh, that rookie got exposed there. He, he, he's just not ready. And uh, he looked he like he, solid. he was rock solid, I felt like, for yeah. the role they needed him for. All right. Then, of course, our last pick, A.T. Perry. I mean, I, he, he uh, late in the season really started to come on mm-hmm. and show his, his ability as a as a red zone threat. What did you think of A.T. Perry's season? Well, thank God for him because I feel like that pick, that selection, that late, I think he brings the composite score up. Yeah. I mean, you weren't. I wasn't expecting much out of him. I thought this was going to be a redshirt year for him. He steps in. I think he got his first touchdown in week, what, 10 against Minnesota. Um you know, the last game of the season, it's him, it's Olave, and it's Rashid Shaheed. Four touchdowns on the season. Given where you got him at 195 overall and a pick they got from Denver, I think that was involved in the trade of Adam Troutman. Right. I really like this selection. I think this kid's got a high future. I can't go any higher than a, a B with this grade because he didn't play uh, first half of the season. But I, I really think the Saints like him. I think he he certainly gave you more than what the, the value – of the selection you got him at, and um, he 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 stepped up in some big moments. And I know he had the the issue against Atlanta, where he kind of he 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 thought he false started. Yeah, but he seemed to shake that off pretty quickly the following week, and really did, um, and, and really finished off the season nicely. And I kind of like this young trio of receivers. I do too. Uh, when you talk about Shahid, Perry, Olave, I think they can add a veteran to that mix. But they I probably should. I think I really liked where A.T. Perry ended up settling in at. So overall, Brzee, Walski, Miller, Saldaveri, Hayner, Howden, Perry. Overall, when it comes to solid contributions in year one, three of them really gave them to you when you yep. talk about Brzee, Perry, Howden. and Howden. Yep. I'm on the fence with Miller in terms of his rookie year. It wasn't – he was injured. And then the other guys, there was virtually no impact. So I'm giving this a C or a C minus based on instant impact. It just wasn't there, like in its totality. But none of them had. Look, they had three solid contributions from Brzee. Like I said, Brzee, Howden, and Perry. But none of them had that OMG impact, rookie of the year impact. Sure. Or uh, it was more solid. It was more glue guy. It was more. Let's see where the ceiling's going to end up. So. Too many guys, though, had zero impact at all. 
which brought the overall class score down. Again, this is not the end-all, be-all. These guys can improve. I've seen it a ton of times. And honestly, what it boils down to is uh, some guys are more ready right out of the gate than other guys, and you just want more available than not. But it wasn't. it's not the worst I've seen in, co- in terms of draft classes for the Saints. It's not the best I've seen in terms of instant impact when it comes to worst classes, when it comes to uh, draft mm-hmm. classes for the Saints. In most classes, like they said, the final grade isn't known until a few years out. So to me, let's look at some of the classes that are a few years out. 2022, the second year, guys. Olave, Alante Taylor, Trevor Penning, DeMarco Jackson, and Jordan Jackson. A starter in, in Taylor. Mm-hmm. A possible star in Olave. And a fringe guy right now in Penning in terms of his, if he's going to be, if he's going to develop or if he's going to be a bust. He's right on the line. I, I think year two... This is probably his last chance to, in other words, it was very disappointing this year, but you can't call him a bust yet. Next year at this time, you can certainly call him a bust. In 2021, Adebo, Werner, Turner, Landon Young, Ian Book, Kawan Baker. Two defensive starters, solid guys. I think Adebo uh, can be a really good corner in this league. I think Werner, I thought he dipped a little bit in production this year. I didn't think he was quite as good this year. I think you can kind of chalk that up to the to the defense just kind and of being I, down. Yeah, as and a whole. it felt like it felt like he dipped when the D line production kind of dipped. Yep. But I just feel like he takes a lot of chances and freelances too much. Um, a potential bust, obviously, in Peyton Turner. Maybe he's already there at bust status. So overall, um, I mean, I don't know how you grade that class, but uh, and then 2020 Ruiz, Bond, Troutman, Stevens. Bond got a little play at the end of the year with uh, edge pass rushing. Mm-hmm. So Ruiz is a starter. So you got Ruiz is a starter. Adebo's a starter. Werner's a starter. Olave could potentially be a star. Taylor's a starter. And you, got, you have two potential busts in there and a couple guys that aren't on your roster anymore. So it's okay. The 2020 through 2022, and then if you throw in the 2023 class, it's okay in terms of draft classes. Certainly not great, great, especially when compared to a successful or to the successful teams right now uh, sure. playing in the playoffs. Detroit is really the team that just jumps out to me. And they're not the only one, but when you talk about those last three draft classes, how much they're contributing right away with St. Brown and Laporta and Hutchinson and all those guys. And you just got a lot of personality in those two. Well, and you, they're just, they hit. I mean, they yep. hit on those picks. Now, look, again, the story is not all the way written. And, I, again, it's not, not terrible. It's not great. But... Um, I, I just think when you compare where they're at versus where some of the teams are at, I think they've they've got to start hitting on a few of these guys and starting this this off season with this draft coming up in a couple of months. Absolutely, and it's all really going to come down to uh, we we got to figure out who the Saints are going to bring in as their offensive coordinator yeah. first. So, do we have any updates on the offensive coordinator search, Sean? Well, one thing that's jumped out today, Dan Pitcher is now, according to Ian Rappaport, going to take the Cincinnati Bengals OC job. He's getting promoted because their OC is now the head coach of the Tennessee Titans. So that's yep. one guy they wanted. And that's one of the issues when you go after some of these guys. Uh, in Bobby Sloak's case with the Texans, if he goes on to another head coaching to a head coaching job, Gerard Johnson's probably the next man up for that mm-hmm. organization. Would you rather work with C.J. Stroud, the up-and-coming rookie, or the situation that they have here? I don't know. But that's still some of the risk you run. And then what was the name from Pittsburgh? As uh, Mike Sullivan. Mike Sullivan, the Pittsburgh QB coach. Yeah, he was the play I, I caller don't... for the last seven games of the season. And look, they did okay, but I nothing about that really jumped out. I'm I'm a little surprised at that name, to be honest with you. Look, man, like Pittsburgh, and I I, I, tw- I tweeted about this earlier. Bottom ten passing offense this year, uh, averaging 186 pass yards per game, good enough for 25th in the league. And 24th in the league in total pass yards, and their running game was ranked 13, 13th in yards per game. Now you're going to say, but Vasilios, the first few game, the first three quarters of the season were yeah. the play calling was from Matt Canada. Well, I got something for you. In those seven games that Sullivan play called for, they put up 18 points per game. They, put, they had two games where they scored 30-plus. Mm-hmm. The rest of the games, they were scoring 16, 13, 10. With Sullivan? With Sullivan, mm. play caller. So, look, you say what you will. You are more than you as fans are more than welcome to come up with mm. your own opinions, and I will not try to come up with them for you, but that is not the type of hire the Saints should make. Like I get it. You're doing your due yeah. diligence and everything like that, but if you are a Saints fan, 
you should want a splashy hire. You should want yeah. something that's going to, that I you know agree. it's just just the vibe that will change the vibe that, that, of everything. That would not generate any buzz, any excitement. At all. Kubiak At would, all. Greasy would, Robinson would, Johnson would, even Gruden um, would at least generate a buzz. You need something like that, some kind of life. Uh, just a little bit of a jolt of energy to your organization I with agree. a big time addition. So I'm with you there. That that I was surprised to hear that name. Um, and I'm still like I'm I'm kind of sitting back watching this this search happen, and I don't I don't have a feel for who's who they're leaning towards or who I they really either. like or who what could or could not end up happening. Feels like they're doing what they said. They're going to be very patient and really take their time and and look at a bunch of candidates. So. The Saints OC search continues with a few updates, but updates in terms of crossing a few guys off the list. You can already cross off Waldron, and now you can cross off Dan Pitcher off the list of the Saints OC search. So the search continues, and we'll see eventually who they settle in on. All right. Any final thoughts as we head into the latter part of this no, week, Sean? No, no. An interesting week up ahead. Next week I'll be in Mobile, but uh, for now we are good, and um, let's just see what happens the rest of the week. Sounds good. For Sean Fazan, I'm Vasilios. This has been the Fox 8 Overtime Podcast. We'll catch you guys on Friday.